Hello everyone, and welcome to my first attempt to play Take on Mars. We jump right into the action at Ptolemaeus Crater on Mars with the Mars 3 lander. Now the Mars 3 lander uh, was unsuccessful because it lost communication 14 seconds after touching down. However, however we uh, have a little bit of an alternate history here as far as it deploying its little rover. Its rover was connected to the lander portion with a 15 meter cable, and you can actually see the cable there. And here I am controlling the rover in order to fulfill my objectives. And so they start you right off with this, which is good because this is about as much action as you're going to see in this first video. This is the most exciting thing. Though the rest of it is a process of discovery, I'll say. And so here I am trying to figure out what I can get away with. Uh, obviously all I'm supposed to do is activate the scientific instruments right now. But just, just for my own amusement, I'm trying to see how far I can stretch that cable. Honestly. 15 meter umbilical cable. And uh, I'm also taking a look around, of course. Why not enjoy the view? It's an interesting little rover. So it gives you, obviously this is a Russian rover. Uh, you can see Prop M at the top, that uh, Pi for P. Uh, the symbol that seems to be P is actually Rho. This is uh, based on the Greek alphabet. So here I go, trying to stretch that cable, but then I notice that I have a boulder in front of me. And I can't really turn in this. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't do turning. So uh, fortuitously, there is a boulder in the way, preventing me from uh, seeing if I can sort of topple the lander or something, or, or get to the point where the cable is so taut that I can't stretch it anymore. But I, I still uh, go for it. So, uh, I got take on Mars during the Steam summer sale. I also picked up Planet Explorers and Space Engineers, just out of my own curiosity. I've always wanted to play. They were on my playlist, uh, playlist, wish list, and uh, I uh, nabbed them when I could. I'm obviously a little bit late to the whole thing. People have been playing all these games for quite a while now. But this is probably the most structured of the games. Planet Explorers and Space Engineers are like KSP in that they're sandbox-ish games. This is much more mission-based, so I'm not too sure how well this will go. Uh, visually, of course, immediately very appealing, but here I am, I'm stuck at the crater, didn't really get the cable taut. So time to look into doing the science. And so here I am, just randomly clicking on things, wondering where I should do the science, how I should do the science. But eventually I'll figure it out, eventually I'll see things on top that look like buttons. I mean, there are a lot of things on here that are completely non-functional right now, like the little cursors at the bottom. But I'm actually also wondering where the instruments would pop out. Uh, and there we go. I find the buttons. Okay, we've got that. And I... I, I was thinking that I should aim at the surface, but uh, this ended up toppling my rover, so... I, uh, I decided to quickly do the science while I could. Okay, and there we go. Many years later. So now we jump to our main... Our main event. Our, uh, our own little space program. Here it is, and they Welcome start you off space program. with this tutorial. The area you see in front of you is the mission control room, from where you will send vehicles to the surface of Mars on various scientific missions. First off, you will be offered to choose between game time and real time. You may skip time if using game time, but time passes only as you play. The real time setting is a bit more hardcore and does not allow time skipping, instead working with real life time. This choice is given only once, so choose wisely. 
You may also disable automatic tutorials such as this one using the button at the bottom right of the tutorials menu. This menu may also be brought up at any point in the game using the shortcut key and serves as a useful reference in case you get lost. Lastly, the top right of the screen displays information about your current budget as well as your current technological level. The tech level determines what equipment you have at your disposal and increases as you complete the various missions on Mars. Okay, got all that. There seems to be a lot of tutorials on the side, but really there aren't, as I'll show you. We'll just go through the ones to that move there are. between areas within the Mars X Space Agency, such as the map, click the appropriate areas on the screen. Alternatively, for faster navigation, use the corresponding buttons at the bottom of the screen. The map serves as a hub to access new missions as well as ongoing missions. From here, you will send vehicles to Mars as well as track your overall progress in exploration. Locations such as Victoria Crater, seen here, must firstly be unlocked to be accessed. This is because the satellite data must first be acquired, which requires some budget money to do so. Once we have the satellite data, we can see an overview of the location itself, displaying missions and vehicles on the surface. If we select a mission in the map, we can see general information about it, with more available in the mission details. Provided the mission does not have an assigned vehicle, we may send a new one to complete it, or assign a vehicle on the surface that is close by and can complete the tasks at hand. Keep in mind that the vehicle list to the right includes both vehicles nearby and vehicles that would need to be launched, but only displays those vehicles that can complete the tasks required. From here, we can also connect to vehicles that are already on the surface by either selecting them directly or selecting their mission and then pressing connect to vehicle. Also, should a vehicle be severely damaged and unusable, we can abandon it by selecting it and then pressing abandon vehicle. This will make its mission available for a new vehicle to complete. Lastly, should you choose to send a new vehicle, you may customize it by selecting vehicle details followed by modify vehicle which will take you to the rover lab for customization. Okay, got all that? So, yeah, a little bit of a sick issue between the subtitles and the audio there. The rest of the videos that are sort of supposed to be there aren't, aren't there, and so here I am going through them wondering if there are any that are actually available, and there aren't. So that's, that's all the tutorial we get, and, uh, and yeah, so I, I try and figure that out because it's not fair putting a whole list of uh, tutorial videos when none of them are actually functional. So we have to figure out what missions we can actually do. Now I pick, I decide to pick real time and I'm probably going to regret this uh, and they automatically pop up with this tutorial again. So okay thank you go away and of course uh, Next, I'm going to. This is really no option. I have to go to the map. The, go to the map, please. Come on. Okay. And then of course they come up with that tutorial. Okay. Close. Close. Well close. All right. So now, what do we do? We have a budget. Uh, you can see that in the upper right-hand corner there. And we have to figure out what we can do with it. Now, they don't charge you for launching the rockets, amazingly enough. It really is just the payload that we have to pay for. Apparently, we have unlimited rocket budget. So, very unlike Kerbal Space Program in that respect, where obviously the, the rocket is the main, main deal. So, here I am. I pick Lyot Crater first, and I'm just trying to find... All the locations look really very similar so I don't know what kind of choice I'm gonna make between these but yeah so we get we'll send eventually send four probes to Lyot Crater and we don't have much of a choice in probes uh, these because uh, we haven't unlocked any parts yet uh, we do that through the tech tree but right now I'm just gonna send a probe just I'm trying to figure out whether I'm actually doing the right thing, obviously. This is all new to me. And then asked me to pick a specific landing location within that little circle. And so, okay. Go for it. Loading streams don't take very long. This is real time. So, the choice between uh, 
re real time and uh, accelerated time, if you will, is that we can't speed up the rate of technological innovation. So it's all timed. Anyway, uh, I'll show you that later. Here we are setting down on the surface. You can see the probe approaching. Our retro rockets firing. And plop. And we roll around a little bit. Settling down. And now I wonder what I'm supposed to do. Uh, of course, uh, am I supposed to do something in particular to satisfy the mission? So I proceed to try and click on things. And some of these things, it's, it's not worth clicking on. Actually, most of these things it's not worth clicking on. Here, it says, it says we've got... Uh, We've got a good situation here. We've got our mission complete, basically. But I'm not quite satisfied with this. I haven't actually done anything, really, I feel. So, I'm figuring if I can do something. And the answer is no. The answer is... I mean, I can take pictures. But I can't move the camera at all. So there we go, we've taken a picture. But there's nothing else to do, really. Oh, I, actually there is one thing I can do. And I'm gonna start randomly pushing keys on my keyboard eventually. And once I start pushing keys on my keyboard, trying to figure out what could be done here, I will eventually hit C. Ah, there we go. And that changes camera, obviously. So that's the one thing we can do. But you can see the probe there. There's not much to it. Clearly, uh, for $52,000, we weren't going to get too much out of it. And here is where we landed. Very scenic. Quite beautiful. But there's not much to do here. Not right now, anyway. Not until we unlock more technologies. And so the next question is going to be, how long will it take us to unlock more technologies? Now, the question, well, before that, the question is, uh, how long will it take me to figure out how to move along here? Okay, I clear those, and then I finally hit that menu. Just looking at the options. Wondering what things do. I still don't know yet. Uh, I'm sure eventually all these things will have a function. No mission assigned. That catches my attention. But uh, nothing to do there either. Uh, the, no mission is assigned because our mission is satisfied. If I had gone there earlier, I would have seen the mission that I was already on. Okay, and then the final button. Yes, here we go. Disconnect. That's what we need to do. Yep. And so we leave that probe. And, well, there's nothing too much to do except for send another one at this point. This, uh, the initial phase of Take on Mars tends to be quite focused on drudge work. As uh, you can see in the upper right, there's the tech tree, and I'll get to that in a bit. But right now I'm just trying to figure out what I can do, and I, I decide here to try and make my own probe. So I had been using the one that was already provided, and I go, okay, let's let's go for a new probe. Maybe I can construct something that's a little bit more interesting than the base. And the answer is no. Uh, I haven't unlocked the technology yet. They give you preset slots on the probe body, and you can put specific things there. This is not Kerbal Space Program where you can slap anything you want anywhere you like. So yeah, that's a little bit restricting. Well, okay, a lot restricting. So 
So all I can do is put basically the same components that I had on the probe that was already built for me because I don't have anything else to place. Eventually I see the test vehicle button and so I decide to go with that. I don't know what that does obviously and the answer is not very much when when we're going to the Mars yard. This is on Earth, so this is a, an Earth-Mars yard. And there's not really much to do when all you've got is a probe that can't move. And that's the situation right now. So I decide, well, there is, of course, there's no mission for the Mars yard. Come on. Let's go back. This is the probe we're going to have to use no matter what. So logical thing to do after I figure this out this is my real-time exploration of this program you're seeing here and you can see my happy little cursor trying to click on things as usual but eventually I have to launch and so yep pick your launch uh, your uh, destination site. I'm wondering whether I should really be clicking right at that green marker, but Okay, here we go. And here I figure out yes take a look the mission is there so basically we get hundred and fifty thousand dollars for each of these missions the probes cost fifty two thousand and then we get this little bonus ten thousand so jump to the outside view uh, I don't there are new there are actually two outside views external views but anyway there it is flop And that's it, our mission is actually complete. We uh, net $108,000 for each of these. And so all we have to do is disconnect once that's done. And how many of those do you have to do? Well, the answer is 10 on Mars, and then 3 more on Deimos, Mars's moon. I don't know what, what, why Phobos is not a moon that we have to do. But uh, yeah, Phobos is not on. And so altogether, you're going to be sending a lot of those probes that you don't do. You can see the pr objectives here. Oh, uh, was it uh, four on Deimos? Yeah. You can get extra credit if you like, but I don't see... Well, you might want to get the cash. If you want to get the cash. What do you use the cash for? Well, you use the cash to unlock more parts in the tech tree. And you also need to unlock technologies to explore stuff like the North Polar Caps, as you can see. I conduct a few more missions, then jump to the tech tree finally to take a look at what's going on here. And you can see the, the costs of some of these technologies that we have to unlock. And so I go through, and I'm just gonna click on them and see which ones I want to unlock. Basically I'm, I unlock the stuff for small landers and uh, their instrument arms. Uh, they have a robotic arm that they can use if you can unlock the right technologies for that. So it's quite a quite a wide tech tree if you can see. All very well categorized and really there's no reason why you shouldn't research as much as possible. You'll see that the, there is a research time, and that's what the whole real-time thing is about. So you can't speed that up. When it says five hours, it will take five hours real-time to research it. And you can see the ca uh, clock counting down there. So, uh, really, unlike what I did, you should start this stuff off like right away. So that you don't have to wait as long as I... Well, I mean you know, five hours, just do it one night and it'll be all over when you wake up in the morning, so...
Very quickly, I want to jump to the one thing I haven't showed you, which is a Deimos landing. And really, it's quite a non-event because it's always in the dark, even though we can sometimes see the sun and therefore it, it should be lit up. So here I am. I've, I'm going to go to external view if I'm not there already. Yeah, there we go. And so there's the sun, but it's sure not lighting me up at all. And so all the Deimos landings, all four of them were in the dark. What a little probe with a camera can do in the dark, I have no idea. I guess maybe it's got an infrared camera? Well, it didn't say that, did it? Uh, that presumably might be a technology we could unlock. But so yeah, uh, probe landing on Deimos. Uh, even less interesting than the probes landing on Mars, because there's no real visual appeal to it. So... Not entirely sure why they had us do these. I guess we might find out eventually. Might be part of a grander plan or something like that. There's a lot, a lot of potential so far, so I'm gonna continue exploring Take on Mars. But as you can tell from the fact that I'm doing a post commentary, I wasn't entirely sure about it just yet. I wasn't even sure if I was gonna make a video on it. So I think, I think I will pursue it, but uh, it might be off and on. So tell me if you do want to see more of these videos on Take on Mars, because uh, certainly it, it's, got, it's got a lot going for it. And of course, this is all still in development. This is a early access game. And so we have to make that very clear. They're adding features to it and they're still building on it, uh, just like KSB is being uh, constantly updated and hasn't been officially released yet. So keep that all in mind. And so, this is not indicative of what the final version might be. So far, so good, as far as uh, a lot of the visual appeal is concerned. And at least I can see with the tech tree where we might end up going in the future. Oh, those little messages. I, I, some of those are clearly flavor text that I should be reading. But I'm not. Because, uh, I mean, this early phase of the whole thing, if they popped up with it, if they popped up with those messages, I'd be, I'd have more of a sense that each of the missions that I sent probes to Mars on, all those 10, were somewhat different. And, but because they're hiding them over there, I don't really get that sense. It seems like the same thing over and over and over again. And so, really, I, sh I should have been reading those, just to get a sense that I was doing different things each time. But I totally ignored them because they were hidden and only cleaned them up in this late phase of the game. Well, this late phase in the first phase of the game. So yeah, eventually, Deimos missions were complete. And since I don't have required technologies to go any further, I have to wait five hours before doing anything else. <laughs> At least five hours. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to be... Un I mean, I've unlocked certain technologies, but I don't know what they do necessarily. So we'll have to see about all of that. So, I was sort of forced by the nature of using real time in this game to to basically end the video here so interesting stuff and hopefully we'll get to more dynamic missions where I can actually control something on Mars I know that's gonna happen and uh, I've only watched one video on this so far and that was one of Scott Manley's videos so it's not like I'm coming into this with a whole lot of uh, background knowledge about the game so it's a lot of exploration for me as you could tell by the way I was sort of oh, wandering with my mouse around the screen. So yeah, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.